right, let's look at the granny square motif then. Um, it's a fairly standard granny square. I have completed this one up to and including round five. Uh, so there's not too much to trip you up, uh, up to this point. The next round is round six is that round with the crisscross. But up to this point, it's really quite straightforward. Just two things I wanted to mention. Um, on the third round, just be aware just be careful because you might be flying around, that middle cluster has actually got four stitches in it instead of three. All right, so it's the only one that has that and you will need that for that next round. So just be aware of that. Also, when you move to do your double crochet UK terminology, um, the smaller stitches, you need your bigger hook. So just be aware of hook size changes on this motif as well. So the next round is round six. It is a cream round and it is the round with the crisscrosses, let's get to it. Okay, so we're ready for round six, which is the round with the cross stitches on. And I'm gonna join the cream yarn into the center stitch in any corner, any group of three. And I must um, reiterate that we're not gonna be going over stitch counts too much because you'll be working through that on your pattern. This is technique. And the technique that we're going to be looking at here is that crisscross stitch. So I've joined the yarn in in the same way that Jane does um, in that lovely technique video that we've mentioned to you. Do take some time to have a look at that because there's so many great little tips in there that will help you um, in all your projects, not just in this one. So I've done my three double crochet, um, UK terminology, um, into that first stitch. And I'm just going to do stitches across here, six stitches across here to get me to the point where I need, whoops, yarn's gone, where I need to make that stitch. And what we'll do when we get there, where are we? Two, four, five, six. We'll stop and have a look where we've got to kind of aim for with that long stitch. So it's a double treble crochet. So it is by nature a long stitch, but we would normally be used to putting our next stitch um, in the row that we're working on. OK, and this particular one is going to be worked two rows down. So it's going to be worked into the aqua round down here. This is why you need the four posts, because we're going to work one round this front post. or sorry, this first post and one round this last post. And where we are now, we're working, we need to work diagonally. So if we take a diagonal line, you will see that it's this post that we're aiming for with this big long stitch. Okay, when we come across here, we'll take a diagonal that way. But for now, we're taking a diagonal down here and we're aiming here for this stitch. So you can see it has quite a length to travel. It is a long stitch, but I would still suggest you leave it a little looser than you might normally. So how do we do it? Let's go. So it's a double treble. So it's going to go twice, the yarn's going to go twice around the hook, as you're familiar with. And instead of, like I said, going into that next stitch, we'll take that diagonal and my hook is going to go between the first and second posts on that aqua round in that center cluster. So it's going to go from front to back between those two posts and then come back from back to front from the back to the front. So that first aqua post sits across the top of the hook. Okay, now you can see if I put my hook diagonally, that is the space that we have to cover with this stitch. So do not pull it as tight as you might normally. But then all you're gonna do is complete the stitch as you normally would. So yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Just pulling it a little more than I might normally, yarn over, pull through two to bring it up to this top here yarn over and pull through the last stitch and if I stop there you can see that we've taken that diagonal that very very long stitch is coming from aqua all the way up to the top here and it's sitting there quite happily we've got a tiny bit longer perhaps than it would be but that will not show when we've got our next row on we've just kind of captured that aqua stitch and we're now going to work along and make its partner stitch to make that look really pretty Right, let's have a look just to make sure and um, we've got to skip a stitch here and let's just make sure that we skip the right stitch. So if I bring the work forward, you can see, I'll just take my hook out there, you can see this, the cream yarn coming out of this stitch. So that is a worked stitch and we're going to skip the one that is next to it. So not this one, it's already worked the one next to it. So just make sure you don't sort of count that one as a skipped stitch. It's the next one along. So skip that one. We're going to put one double crochet into the next one along. Then two in the next one along from that. 
one in the next one and then we're ready to do the partner stitch of that lovely little crisscross so we'll stop again and we'll have a little look so if we take that diagonal again from the next stitch that we're going to work which is this one here and we take the diagonal if i leave my hook down like that you can see it's falling down to here so that is the first um treble of that treble cluster there the first one there and we're going to work between these two this time so same as before we will go twice around the hook and we this time we're going to take our hook and we're going to come behind the first stitch it's a little bit awkward this one but it's okay don't worry it's meant to be so if you look like you're tying knots you're doing it right so because we're coming in front of this first post here it's actually in that gap between the clusters that's where our hook is going to go it's going to go behind that front post sorry behind that first post and then come up behind it so the hook is coming up between the first and the second posts all right so let me show you that one more time my yarn is twice around the hook i'm coming to the right of that first post so it's through that large gap between the two granny clusters it goes behind the first post and then comes up from behind between post number one and two all right and this is where we start to make our double treble so yarn over and pull through and as before let it relax do not pull it quite as much as you would normally okay yarn over and through two i'm just letting the tension of that stitch just guide me up to where it needs to go i'm now up at the top here so i can finish yarn over through two let me take my hook out and if you look we have that neat little crisscross and it's sort of pulling that into shape there's not you can kind of work the stitches closer up to the top if you need to but it looks really neat so to finish off this row then i'm going to skip the next stitch again skip that one and work over six more stitches and then that will bring us sort of back to that repeat Okay, so that's the first side finished. You can see you've got the crisscross sitting nice and centrally, nice and neatly, and hopefully that wasn't too scary. Once you've finished all of the edges, all of the all four sides, you'll get that effect. And you've just got one more round to do with your navy um, to finish it off. One thing to point out with, with the last round is read it really carefully because you've got a, a couple of half trebles uh, around here around the crisscross section just to keep that level or sorry to keep keep that edge absolutely level you need to be working half treble slightly taller stitches just to pull things up and keep them level all right so do pay careful attention to your pattern at that point but otherwise really straightforward uh, round number seven to finish off your granny squares